When the garden is full and lush and there's lots of crops coming in, it is so nice to eat fresh food straight from your own garden. But when the garden is not full and the season is off, it's nice to have a few things set up through canning to keep you through the winter or through the off season. Everyone has a story. And every story counts. The subject of canning is one of those things that some people are really scared of. Uh, they're afraid they're going to get poisoned or it's not going to be good food or whatever. It's, it's just something that people have a little bit of a hard time with. I didn't want to get into canning for a long time because I had those same fears. I've tinkered with canning, but I don't use it for a main support for my family. One of the things that I love about Deep South Homestead is that Danny and Wanda, they're the real deal. They garden first and video second. They've told me several times that in their household, video comes second. You can tell by their videos that their garden and their canning is priority. I'd love to invite you to a few minutes listening to Danny and Wanda as they discuss the basics of canning, helping people get over their fears, and to know that they can do this too. Hello everybody, this is Danny. And Wanda. From Deep South Homestead. And we would like to uh, thank Blake over at Daddy Curbs Farm for inviting us uh, over to his channel. Uh, we want to talk today about some of the basics of canning. Um, it's something that seems like it uh, kind of startles people a little bit. Yeah, today. they're a little scared of it. We want to kind of break it down to some simple basics. It's very easy. Canning is extremely easy. Now, the first thing you got to realize is you need the books and you need the literature to understand about canning. There's basics in canning. You've got to know whether you've got acid foods or non-acid foods. And so we start with bowl canning books. They're, they're called blue books, but you can get any kind of canning books. They're online, there's a supply, but we prefer the bowl. We have three different years, and basically they're all the same, but they give you all the basics you need to determine how to can your vegetables or your fruits. Things like uh, your fruits, uh, your peaches and apples and uh, pears. See, pears. we have pears here. These are pears. These are called acid foods. Acid foods, uh, tomatoes. And we have tomatoes. We have tomatoes here. These are all acid foods. These are foods that can be water bath. You do not have to have a pressure canner with them. And we're going to show in a few minutes the difference between water bath canning and pressure canning. And also your vinegars. And when you're canning mm -hmm. things in vinegars, you uh, can use water baths on those. That would be like pickles. And like pickles anything and anything pickle. like that. You yeah. can do those in water baths. But now, your low acid foods are your vegetables. These are things like Irish potatoes, green beans, sweet potatoes. Peas. We have peas, squash. Carrots. Carrots, yes. These things like this, these are all low acid foods and they must be pressure canned and when you pressure can you need to figure out your altitude and what pound of pressure that you pressure your canner at to and, be safe and that's where those books come in handy because with each vegetable or or whatever there's a different amount of time yes. and each altitude like you said yep. has a different amount of pressure now one of the things i want to tell you all about water bathing and pressure canning You've got to determine which jar to use. You can use any jar water bathing. Exactly. But you cannot use just any jar when you're pressure canning. You must have a specific jar for pressure canning. I'm going to show you the difference here. These are the old mayonnaise jars that used to be glass. There's no writing or anything like this, and you can still buy these, right? Yeah, you can still buy the plain uh, yeah. water bathing jars, I call them. Yeah, the ones that are made for pressuring are the ball or masons or something Curve. like that, the cur. These are all thick, heavy, heavy glass jars, and they're designed to take the pressuring temperature. Okay, and these are quarts. And you've got regular mouth and wide mouths. So it depends on what you're doing. Then we have pints. Pints. Again, the ball, cur. Uh, what yeah, golden yeah, Mason. harvest Mason? Yeah, they're all, all the they same. Work, as long as there's some writing and stuff, and they say for canning. Canning. You got the wide mouth and the regular mouth also on the pint jars. Okay, 
jelly jars. They come in a wide variety. Of yeah, you actually have half pint, quarter pint, and they're all decorative looks. Just know that any of your little jelly decorative things, probably water bath candy. Now, I might want to add too that when you get ready to can, there's different kinds of lid. These are BPA free. Now, we will occasionally use the golden ones for jellies and jams if we know they're going to be eaten pretty quick because there's nothing really that much different with the lids. It's just that the gold ones, because we our store our food for long periods of time, they tend to rust in the humidity faster than the silver ones do. And again, you have regular and wide mouth. Yes. So you have to know the size of your jar lid to know that if you need regular or wide mouth, and again, regular and wide mouth rings. rings. If you buy jars, this comes with it. But right. if you are going to be reusing jars, you have to know the difference between all of Remember, these. if you're planning on being a survivor or a prepper or anything like that, this jar is really good, but it's completely useless to you if you don't have a stocked up supply of them lids. Because if a yes. life-changing event happens and you don't have lids, you're, uh, not, canning you're, not, you're not canning anything unless you do some fruits. Now you can put wax on the top of fruits and, yes. and they'll last that way, but um, you really need to stock up on lids. But now there's some supplies you're going to need whenever you do the canning. That makes it, you don't have to have this. No, you don't have to, but, but it, it really makes, makes life, life easier. easier. This, is a, this is a funnel that's made that fits right in the top of a small mouth, a regular mouth jar. Fits and right in there perfect. They do have funnels for the wide mouth. They do make a special one for wide mouth, but we keep the small one and we use it in both. And then there's this magnet here for reaching. And I'll reach down and the lid sticks right to it. You get it up out of hot water. When you're doing it, your hands don't have to get in the hot water. That really makes it easy Easier. there. And? And then you've got your tongs. Two different kinds of tongs, one for regular mouth and one for wide mouth. Now we just use the regular mouth one because you reach down in the water once you're uh, your stuff is extremely hot. You don't want to touch it with your hands. You can reach down here with these tongs and pick it up out of the water and set it over to the side. And that way it's a safety issue. You don't have to burn your hands or have to reach down there with a rag trying to get it or something like yeah. that. It's really safe. It makes it a lot easier. Here is the two different types of canners that we use here at Deep South Homestead. One is a granny ware. It's a water bath canner. We have the wire basket. Now this wire basket sits on top. When your jars are completely submerged, you want the water to be just above the lids on the jars in order for it to can properly. And then we'll set our lid back on in here. And when it starts boiling, we set the timer on the stove to whatever time the ball book requires for the particular type of fruit or, that we're doing. This one here, this is called a pressure canner. Now this is a Presto. They, they have an All-American one. There are several different ones. Mira, they have a lot of different ones out there. In the Presto canner, you have this that keeps your jars off the bottom. A seal around here. It locks down. This pops up. You put this on, it starts jiggling. You want a minute amount of jiggling and you adjust the cooking temperature to keep it from getting too hot. Just small jiggling with this one. And the book tells you what you need as far as how much water in your canner. Always follow the book for the canner. This is a glass top stove. Everybody says, oh my gosh, they tell me do not use a glass top stove. Well, a glass top stove is basically just common sense. This one here has been in use since 2003. We've never had a problem with it. We've always canned on it. We'll have two canners going at one time. Um, the main issue is don't put anything hot on something cold or something cold on something hot here. Don't drop your canner stuff down on it real hard when it's under a lot of heat. Um, don't, don't drag your thing across it like this back and forth. Before you put your printer here, wipe the bottom of it off real good. And make sure there's no grit. Make sure there's no water or anything like that on the bottom of your pot. And this glass top has served us since 2003. Yes, guys, as you can see here in front of us, we have uh, a whole bunch of pears. Our tree just had pears. We've had tomatoes. We've had green beans, Irish potatoes, sweet potatoes. We've got lots of other stuff we've been canning. Um, we have extreme success doing this and keeping us sustainable and keeping our grocery bill down. 
So we're hoping that maybe us just doing this little tutorial here on the basics of canning will maybe lessen some of your fears about canning because it's extremely safe if it's done right. Um, just look at it like this. At least when you do this, you know what you're eating. So thank you from Deep South Homestead and thank you once again, Daddy Curve. Danny and Wanda, thank you so much for sharing that time with us. You, you went over all the basics of canning. It was very encouraging. I love how you guys are sharing in this community to encourage people to get out there and do it and to live a healthier lifestyle. Thank you for being a part of my channel through this Monday Meetups. Anyone who has not yet subscribed to Deep South Homestead, go ahead and head over to their channel and subscribe to their channel and give them a lot of thumbs ups on the videos throughout their channel and in the comments of their videos, let them know that Daddy Curbs sent you. If you're not yet a subscriber of the Daddy Curbs Farm channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can be updated of my new videos as well. Give me a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you appreciate what's going on here on the Daddy Curbs Farm. I'm sure you noticed that there was a slight discrepancy in size and video. Well, that's because Danny and Wanda are the real deal and they live out in the country and their video connection, their video quality was a little smaller due to the fact that they couldn't upload a really big video and send it to me. That's why there was a slight difference in the video size. But thank you so much for your grace on that and thank you for sharing this time with us. I know that they will appreciate hearing from you and I'm glad you're here with me. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon.